Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Ah, gotta talk about special functions yet again. Okay, gotta bring this little series to an end. One after another, only like two more videos left after this one. Okay, it's only a little excursion, a little small adventure. Nothing too calculus heavy, okay? We are going to derive the cosine and the sine integrals today. Pretty easily from our boy, the uh, exponential integral. We have talked about this before, okay? Remember series representation, that was fucking fantastic. Now we are going to go ahead and use our tools that we have derived before, do a little bit of substitutions and then we are basically done. So at first I would like, just like with the last video, consider the generalized exponential integral of the first degree, e1 of z. And if you remember correctly, it was this integral right here. And by doing a little transformation substitutions, by letting z go to negative z and then take the negative branch of this thing, we were able to get to our i of z. We are going to use this at the end of the video, yet again, to bring it into the form of the exponential integral, such that you have a nice collection of formulas at home. Now, how can we continue from here? Well, we would like to get the sine and the cosine integral out of that. We have seen this before, for example, the Dirichlet integral. Now, if we were to have the complex exponential function here, e to the i something, then we would be able to extract the cosine and the sine from it using Euler's formula. At first I would like to introduce a little substitution because if you've ever done physics you might know that we can do if we have imaginary up and lower bounds in an integral we can do a Wick rotation. Basically it's doing a little substitution. I would like to get rid of all the parameters right here such that we don't have to deal with this Wick rotation. Just doing simple algebra right here and simple analysis. Now at first getting rid of the lower bound of the parameterization right here. How can we do that? Well, we would like to introduce a new parameter. Let t be equal to, okay, most easily we could get to a one down here by saying, well, this is nothing but let's say x over z. Okay, does make sense if we plug z into here. Um, no, it has to be t over z. I'm terribly sorry. If we plug z over uh, into here, then we are going to get one being equal to x and when t goes to infinity, well, x simply goes to infinity. Meaning, after doing the substitution, we are going to end up with, okay, one to infinity, e to the negative, t is thus nothing but x times z over, okay, we know t is x times z, and also what is dt? After doing implicit differentiation, we end up with dt being nothing other than z times dx. Meaning, we can plug this into here, end up with those cancelling out under the condition that z is not equal to zero. And now we have this thing in a new form. That's, that's good, okay? Now, I'm going to write it out yet again because we are going to do our transformation now in a second. Integral one to infinity, e to the negative x times z over x dx. Now, I would like to introduce a new parameter. We are going to do the transformation z goes to i times z, okay? We are going to introduce imaginary arguments now. z is going to be transformed to i times z. Leaving us with, if you plug this in, well, on the one hand, that's the equivalence relation, so we have u1 of i times z being thus nothing but the integral from one to infinity of e to the negative x i times z over x dx. And now we can make use of Euler's formula, okay? No need to do big rotation, for example. It's as easy as it is. Meaning e to this something is nothing other than the cosine of x times z minus i times the sine of x times z. And then we can use linearity of the integral to break this up into the integral from one to infinity of the cosine of x times z over x dx minus i times the integral, same upper and lower bounds as before, of the sine of x times z over x integrated with respect to x. 
And well, this is it. <laughs> we are basically done with most of the calculations right here. What I would like to do, I would like to bring this back to our original form. Okay, now we can do this backwards substitution, introducing this yet again to get back to our original t. Meaning if we were to do all those calculations back, we would end up with an integral from z to infinity. That's not a lot of space I have right here. Let me get to a different chartboard, this one right here ending up with the one from z to infinity cosine of t over t dt minus i times the integral from z to infinity of the sine of t over t dt. And now I would like to give those new names because those are our special functions that we wanted to derive. That's where we were headed in the first place. Okay, so this thing right here, we are going to call it the cosine integral ci of z in this case minus i times this thing right here can be decomposed. We are going to do this in a second. I'm going to give this thing the name lower sine integral of z. Okay, with not a capital S but with a lower S. Okay, it has its purpose because if we decompose this right here, this is our c, c sir, c sir, c, fly to the moon. It's a little South Park reference if you get that. Z of Z. We can decompose this. Okay, you can do two cases now. It's just going to change the sign basically of our um, special function that we are going to extract. We are going to decompose this into the integral from Z to zero and then plus the integral from zero to infinity. Maybe you know where this is going. Z of Z. Using the fundamental theorem of calculus, basically, if those integrals exist, if everything converges, then this is the integral from z to zero of the sine of t over t dt, and then plus the integral from zero to infinity of the sine of t over t dt. I hope you can see where you have to do the cases. Okay, either z is less than zero, this is what we are going to assume right now, or it's greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, then we simply um, have to add and subtract something. Okay, it's, it's simple case work, it's not much we have to do right here. Now for the new names. We are going to declare this thing if we extract the negative one to the outside or multiply this by negative one, we can change the up and lower bounds right here from zero to z. This thing right here is going to be called the upper sine integral. Okay, it's just a convention thing. I'm just going to introduce everything that I know about those. That's the basic sine integral. Okay, this is what we are going to find in the literature as being declared as the sine integral. Plus, what is this thing right here? I talked about this at the beginning of this whole series about special functions. This thing right here is the Dirichlet integral, pi over two. We have derived this before. Link will be in the description, probably, definitely. I'm pretty sure there is. Now we have decomposed our C of Z, and basically we can plug this into here, meaning our E1 of I times Z of imaginary arguments, basically is thus nothing but. On the one hand, we have the cosine integral of z minus i times the lower sine integral of z. But if we plug the definition of the sine integral into here, we are going to end up with the cosine integral of z. I'm going to distribute negative sine into here, turning stuff around a bit, plus i times. Okay, we are going to end up with, if we bring the negative sine into here, the basic sine integral of z minus pi over 2 this time. Yeah, and cool deal, right? This is basically it. Of z. And this is it. Um, this has been the X course regarding those two special functions, okay? Um, there's also the tension integral, for example, is also a pretty important special function. In the next video, we are going to derive the series expansions for a z and c. Okay, it's, it's going to be pretty quite easy because we already have the um, 
the definition right here, okay, as a series expansion for our E1 offset or I offset. We have derived this before and it's going to be quite a trivial matter, but it's a cool series expansion. And yeah, we're going to talk about this soon. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe and recommend channel if you like, if you want to support channel a bit more. Buy those fabulous t-shirts I created. Fundamental theorem of engineering is absolutely fabulous. And up until next video, have a flamble day. See ya.